Hello, I'm Dave Speakman. Today we're going to talk about online learning and learning a musical instrument online. I've got a few tips for tutors and for parents really. This video I'm majoritively doing for the students that I'm about to start teaching online this week. Great! So there are a few safeguarding concerns around online teaching and there's a few things that we all need to be aware of. If you're a tutor, if you've already been teaching in schools, you've already got your DBS clearance and you've done your safeguarding training, so you should know exactly what to do. If you haven't been teaching in schools previously, these are things that you need to look into really. You need to do a safeguarding course at, at the very least. Excellent. In terms of safeguarding for you as parents, I just advise you that you need to make sure that where your kids are set up to have these lessons, it needs to be in an appropriate location in your house. We can't really be teaching these kids in their bedrooms for obvious reasons, and they need to be appropriately dressed at all times. They can't be in their pajamas having their lessons. <laughs> you know, we need them to dress appropriately. Um, really as they would in school on a non-uniform day. I think that that would be the best guidance that I could give. So to do these lessons, we don't really need any specialist equipment. We're so lucky with the time that we live in, ish. A computer would be ideal. You could also do it on a tablet, but it will also work on a mobile phone. If you're gonna use a mobile phone, it's a good idea to get one of these Gorillapod things. I'll show you that in a little bit. The way that I've been delivering my lessons has been using an app called Zoom. I found this to be really good. I've, I've done this before for, for quite a long time now. So moving over to this period where we have to do the things online for, for the foreseeable future, it, it's very doable actually. And we're quite lucky as music teachers that we still can carry on doing our jobs and it's really lucky for the students who they're not gonna have their learning of the musical instruments disrupted too much when so much else has been disrupted for them. I think that's, that's really cool that we can keep going with that. It's really important. So I'm just gonna show you how to set up uh, Zoom, both for somebody who wants to teach and for somebody who wants to receive these lessons. It's dead straightforward. You don't need any specialist equipment. I have quite an elaborate setup with what I've done here at the studio and I have another setup at home that I've rigged up as well, just in case I can't get to the studio. You really don't need anything special. It's very, very straightforward to, to do. I've done it in an elaborate way just because that's, that's what I'm like. I really like messing around with things and it's, it's given me a little bit of a sense of normality this last week to be um, tinkering around with things and experimenting with new and better ways of doing things. But it is straightforward enough to do. We'll show you how to, to get on with it now. So you need to download Zoom from the internet first. Then if we open Zoom, we can click on Schedule and I usually give this a name. I usually name it after the student and sometimes the student's parent, just so that I've got all of that information all in one place. We select a date for the meeting and a start time and an end time. When you come to the end time, it's just gonna warn you that meetings of three or more people require a premium account to go for more than 30 minutes. I don't want a password. I'm gonna have video on the host and the participant, and I want the audio to be the computer audio. Now, because I said that it was in Google Calendar, it's now going into my Google Calendar. I have to just sign that off. And now it will place this as an entry in my Google Calendar. And then I just select the text at the bottom here, and I copy that, and that'll be in your Google Calendar anyway and I just paste that into a new email. I'm gonna paste this into an email address of a different place. I don't have an account with this one, so I'm gonna set up a new account to show you how to do that as well. It's that simple, really. So I paste that, I send that email, and that's that bit done. So when you receive this email from me, you'll see this link in the email. You just click the link, 
and then you pretty much just follow the instructions inside. It'll tell you how to download the software and then you install the software on your computer. Following the instructions, if you're on a PC, it's probably a little bit different to a Mac, but it's, it's more or less the same. And then you're gonna sign in, you're gonna create a new account for yourself with your email address. I'm gonna use the new email address that I just invited myself to, if that makes sense. You'll, you'll have to confirm your email address like you do on loads of other things. So you'll get an email now from them to confirm that. You just activate your account. It comes back into your account. You just have to put in a few basic details about yourself and you have to create a password. I'm gonna call this Dave Speakman 2 because I've got Dave Speakman already. It'll just help me to differentiate between the two accounts. And that's it, and you're into your account then. This is where your account details are. And then when you go into your meetings, we should have a meeting from me. We don't yet. Let's see if we can solve that. The easiest way now is to go back to your emails and to literally just click on that link again. And now, if you say open in Zoom, now it should open that and then we're ready to go. Basically, you can test your audio, make sure that you set your input as probably the microphone on your computer. Again, my setup's a little bit elaborate here, but for you, you can just use the built-in microphone and the built-in speakers, and that should work well. If you have any questions, do ask me in the comments below or send me a message or an email or anything. I'm happy to uh, give you a ring and talk you through it if that's what you need to do. Okay, great. Let's move on to the next bit. First of all, I'm gonna go onto my computer and I'm gonna open the app Zoom, and it's here on the screen now. And all I have to do as the person who's created the meeting is to press start. Now it starts. And we see my face on the screen, <laughs> obviously. Okay, I'm gonna do the other end of it on a phone. On your computer, if you're at the other end, it's literally that simple. You just join the meeting. So on a phone, quite simple. I'm just going to go into my emails, which is where I have this invite here. And I'm just going to press join meeting. And then as you can see on the screen now, I can admit me. So here is me. And then I have to press start video there. And now I can see me and I can see me. It's that simple really. Now the great thing about this, if you're a tutor, is that you could have this second device on something else. So I could, I could point it at some piece of equipment or I could point it at my fingerboard or something like that. It's a way of using a second camera without having to invest in any sort of fancy switching units. So as you can see, all you need really is a mobile phone and, and you can do it. It's, um, it's quite straightforward. When the meeting's over, you just click end meeting. And that is it. It's as simple as that. If you're gonna use your phone, it's maybe a good idea to get one of these Joby Gorillapod things. You literally, you just put your phone in it. You just put your phone in it like this. And now I have a better way of, of seeing myself on, on this screen. So there are a couple of features that we can use within Zoom itself, which are really useful actually for teaching music lessons. One of the things that we can do is we can share the screen with the other user. So I can share my desktop and now the user actually sees my screen on their, on their screen 
and that means that they can then see any any other software that I open. So say if I open Sibelius, I could do some things in Sibelius and I can show them how to do that in Sibelius. Another thing that I can do is I can share a whiteboard with my student and now I can draw anything that I need to on here. I'm not very good at drawing, but <laughs> you get the idea. We can say certain things, you know, I could write out little charts of what I needed to, you know. So I think you can see that's, um, that's pretty useful. And then I just press this stop share to stop that. I can also, in the chat, I can send people a file. So, and this links to your Dropbox as well, which is great for me because I have millions of things in my Dropbox for my students. So I can go to my PDFs for students folder. I can go into my Open Chords course from my beginner guitar course, and I can send them any of those sheets straight away. So I've got this sheet here, crotchets and minims in 4-4 time. I send that. It will just ask me for permission to do that, obviously, you know what computers are like. And then the user will be able to get that sheet on their screen and use that themselves. So there's a couple of little things that actually that the online learning is potentially better than one-to-one -one teaching. There's a few things that we can't do. It's not particularly good for jamming with students. You know, you, you can't really play something together with them. A duet and things like that aren't really gonna work. But if you've got any backing tracks that you've made, or you could record the piano parts, if that's what you do, you could record those piano parts and send them to your students, and then they can record themselves playing with it and send it back, or they can play it back with the backing track. I mean, they can use a metronome quite easily. If they use a metronome at their end, just on their phone or a hardware metronome like this, that's quite a useful thing. I found that really cool when students of mine have been playing scales and they've put a metronome on at their end, and that's worked really well. Okay, so hopefully that sets some of your minds at ease and you feel more relaxed about both delivering and receiving lessons online. I'm actually feeling quite excited about delivering more of my lessons online. The lessons that I've done so far have been brilliant. To those of you who are musicians, I think that you need to start acting now to get moving these things online as, as, as quickly as possible. It's not likely that work is going to return to normality for a very, very long time. I can't see that any of our performance work is going to return. So this is, this is your main income source now for, for the foreseeable future. If anyone has any questions, do please put them in the comments below. I'm carrying on with my beginner guitar course, obviously, on YouTube. So please do get involved in that at my YouTube channel. You can go to my website at davespeakman.co.uk. There's materials there to download for free, materials that I've done myself. If any tutors need any more materials for teaching guitar, I, I'm sure you've got your own, but I'm happy to share my materials with you as well. And if you've got any materials that'd be useful for me, that'd be great too. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe. Please do like the video. All of that is really helpful. I wish everybody the best of luck over the, the coming months. If there's anything I can do to help any of you as individuals, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Um, I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Thanks.